set my timer, so I'm sure to limit my remarks here for you guys. So we've heard a lot of really intelligent discussion here about the particulars of amendments and process and procedure, the Constitution, history. All of those things are incredibly important. Without them, we won't make it through this process into an Article 5 convention and then ultimately our ratification and restraint on the federal government. If I go out and I do this, and I talk to people about this concept already, if I go out and I talk about Article 5, frankly, most people in this country don't know what Article 5 is. The fifth article on the front page of the New York Times? Maybe people just don't know. When you talk ratification, people don't know what you're talking about. When you talk nullification, the average person has no idea what you're talking about. Maybe your colleagues on the floor of the House or Senate, they understand, they're steeped in this stuff, they live this stuff every day, but I think sometimes we who get engaged in politics deeply and spend our lives engaged in politics forget that it is the story that matters. The greatest conservative communicator in the modern age, Ronald Reagan, understood this better than anybody else. He could take complex ideas, he could take the Constitution, he could talk about it in a way that resonated with average people. We must do this. If we want to inspire the grassroots, and I know you guys out there on the front lines of the battle need the grassroots in that fight with you, and if we want to inspire the grassroots to engagement, our primary purpose has to be to tell a story that will engage them. This is probably the only thing I'm an expert on. That and shuffling skulls, I'm pretty good at that. You know, that comes in handy, and shuffling comes in handy in politics as well. <laughs> So one of the things I've learned over the last four and a half years being engaged in grassroots politics is that you have to inflame the passion of the grassroots. And I hear over and over quoted about the BBA, and I agree with this, is that it's an 80, 90% issue, right? If you poll, I know if I go to any Tea Party event, and frankly, if I speak at a lot of progressive events, and if you talk to people about restraining excess spending in Washington, D.C., and even specifically a balanced budget amendment, there is broad support for that. But if you've looked at polling and you go deeper into crosstabs, and I do my own crosstabs by asking the next question and the next question, and you look at, will they come out and fight with passion for the balanced budget amendment? I would argue that right now, the answer is no. They love the idea. You could take a million polls. We could probably get a half a million or a million signatures on our website right now in favor of the balanced budget amendment alone. The, the support is definitely there. But if I say there's a congressional hearing and we need you to show up, we won't get the people. We'll get the Birchers, we will. We'll get the Eagle Forum because they've been organizing around this issue. And you know what they have on this issue? You guys have described it today. Passion, right? They've told a story. We don't believe that story is correct, but they've told an extraordinarily compelling and simple story. What do they say about the idea of an Article 5 convention? Do they go into technical details? Are they talking about the structure of the legislation? Are they talking about the process? No, they say it will be a runaway convention. And when you say that, it strikes fear into the hearts of anybody who loves the Constitution. It's an incredible, compelling message and story. And we must have an equally or more compelling message and story, or it doesn't matter how right we are. It doesn't matter how great the risk is we will lose. If we lose, we will lose the country. We're at the precipice. So we need a compelling narrative. And to me, that's the most important thing. That is why Citizens for Self-Government sponsored the Convention of States project. And when I say sponsored, we're serious about this. We're opening an office in Percival, Virginia. In fact, it's open now. We're hiring a full-time staff of seven. Most of you have met Mark Walschlegel, who's running that project as the executive director. Mike Ferris is the guy leading the project. You guys know me as one of the few lawyers, living lawyers ever, to have argued an Article 5 case before the Supreme Court of the United States. He is also, I would argue, the premier grassroots organizer in the nation. He organized the homeschooling. Homeschooling, as you know, it's not so controversial anymore. But sometimes maybe we forget that at the time when Mike started that movement, it was being made illegal, right? And Mike made that legal, and the homeschoolers have won that fight by and large across the country. 
organized in 50 states across the country in a grassroots movement that changed the nation. And he's bringing that power and that network and that ability to tell the story and frame the narrative to this movement. We brought in and consulted with Rob Nadelson because we want to make sure that when we do this that we understand the history and can place it in context historically. We want to make sure that the call for the convention is historically correct, is constitutionally supportable, and defines a narrative. So the Convention of the States Project is not about any particular amendment. We're big believers in the balanced budget amendment. I'm a big fan of Romans and what he's doing with regulatory reform. What the senator has done in Indiana is incredible and important and helps to defeat the argument against a runaway convention. I'm a fan of and in favor of all of those things. But if we don't tie them together with a narrative that gives people passion, we will lose. We can't lose. We cannot lose. We have an obligation to our children and to our grandchildren and to all of posterity. You know, when I started in the Tea Party movement, I used to say I was doing it for my kids. And that we have an obligation to our kids and our grandkids. But it's become much more urgent in the last four or five years. My parents are in their 70s now. And now my fear, my primary fear, is for my parents, for the here and now, for the tragedy, for the crisis that we are facing. We don't know when the, the crisis will come, when the crash will come, but it can come any minute. And it's our job to fight against that. So the Convention of the States is designed with a broader call, broader but limited. And the call specifically is for an Article 5 convention for the purpose of restraining the jurisdiction and power of the federal government. Anything that would restrain the power and jurisdiction of the federal government is within and germane to that call for a convention. And this is important because I know as I travel the country, and there are millions of Tea Partiers out there, despite what the media will tell you, and even the media will tell you 25% of the voting public consider themselves members of the Tea Party. When they tell you that, they'll tell you that as if it's a bad thing. And that's down from 41%. 25% of the voting public, you're looking at roughly 35 million people who claim active participatory membership in the Tea Party movement. Roughly 40% support the ideals of the Tea Party movement. 40% of voters. So that's a powerful force out there. Add that to the homeschoolers, you have a grassroots army. So this convention is designed to bring all of those people together because some of them are not necessarily balanced budget people. But they support what Roman's doing. And they support other things, they support term limits. Some say they would like to overturn the 17th Amendment and the direct election of senators. So you've got all these disparate groups that have different ideas about how and why we should be limiting the power and scope of the federal government. And we want to bring them all in under a big tent. Big tent, you might hear I'm using language that Ronald Reagan used because he created the big tent. He created this, or was part of the creation of this conservative revolution because he joined so many people together, people who had disparate passions, and he put them together under one tent and accomplished things that people said he could not accomplish. We intend to do the same thing. And there is a specific plan for how to get this done. And this plan is based on what we've done in the Tea Party movement and very specifically what Mike Ferris did with the homeschool movement. You know, we, we estimate there are 40 states where we can get this done. We need 38 states for ratification, right? 34 for the call itself. So we'll be organizing in all 50 states, but focused on 40 states. And in 40 states, that's roughly 4,000 state legislative districts. We believe we need 75% of those. We need 1,000 people in each district. We are currently starting to recruit one captain in each of 3,000 districts. We have the network to do that between the Tea Party network and the homeschool network. We need one captain, and that captain's goal is to recruit 100 people in that district who will be in regular communication with their state legislators, saying, we want the call. We want you to support the call. We'll fight for you if there is a call. We want 25 people, each captain responsible for recruiting 25 people that will regularly or any time show up if you hold a hearing. Never again will be you be alone or with the minority to face the Bergers or the Phyllis Schlafly Eagle Forum folks of the world. You will have a minimum of 25 people who will turn out for any hearing. And we will be encouraging people to participate in the electoral process. You need to know that people will support you with their votes, 
And with money, if you stand up and put your career on the line to support a call for a constitutional convention, you need to know that there's an army behind you. You deserve that, and you need to know it if you're going to stand strong. And we're going to make sure that that army is there for you. These are all critically important components if we're going to get to a convention. We have the people that understand the process and the law and the history. Previously, we haven't had the army. We're going to bring the army to the playing field. And the army requires financial support. We have committed a significant budget to this project. And you can see we're doing it. We're serious about this. We sponsored this, this meal which that you're going to have at lunch. We sponsored dinner last night because we're going to bring the resources to the table so that you guys know that there is a well-armed, well-fed, well-funded army out there to fight on your behalf. These are all critical components to success. The message, you guys leading the charge in the state legislatures, we can't do it without you. We know there's risk to you. We know that it's a difficult fight. And then the final piece of all of this is the media. And the media traditionally is not on our side. The media does not want to limit the size and scope of the federal government. The media is in bed largely with the federal government, but that is about to change. Next week on the 13th, Mark Levin is releasing his new book called The Liberty Amendments, calling for an Article 5 convention specifically and proposing 11 amendments to restrain the power and jurisdiction of the federal government. And I've been speaking with Mark by email over the last few weeks. I know exactly what he's doing. I've read a copy of the book. Mike Ferris has read the book. This is going to change the playing field in the Article 5 space. Now, you guys have been out there, for those of you like Dave that have been leading the charge, man, in the wilderness alone, that's a scary fight. Mark Levin has a huge microphone, and he is going to be out there leading the charge and clearing the playing field. You know, I hear stories of 25 people showing up, or it's 10 to 3 showing up in a legislative hearing. If Mark Levin gets on his microphone and says, What's wrong with you people in Nebraska? We need you to show up at a legislative hearing. You'll have a thousand people show up at that hearing. It's not going to be three versus ten anymore. The playing field is going to change. Levin is launching this book on Hannity next week, a one-hour special on The Hannity Show. By the way, Hannity just, for the first time, nailed down the number one spot in cable television news. Number one. So this book is going to be launched on Levin's microphone and on the number one news and opinion show on cable news, on Sean Hannity's show. And in case you didn't know it, Mark and Sean and another guy you might have heard of, Rush Limbaugh, all work very closely together. They all know what's coming. And if you listen to Sean and Mark, and if you, and if you listen to all of these guys in Rush right now, they're all using language already out of Mark's book. They've all read, you know, Mark wrote it, the other guys have read it, and they're talking and they're saying that we can't fix Washington from Washington. They haven't given up. They're telling people we can fix Washington, but they're telling us it's our responsibility. It's your responsibility. And they're saying we need to fight the fight at home, in the States, led by those of you in this room. It's a historic opportunity. I agree with what Roman said. I look around this room, I'm taking note of every face and every name, and I've got them written down. And it's not just so I can stay in shape with you, it's because history will record this moment as a moment when the country really began to restrain itself, really began to move back towards a constitutional republic, as Mark Levin calls it. you back to Ronald Reagan because I think the rhetoric of Reagan is so important in the way he communicated. And in 1960, when he was elevating Barry Goldwater in his run for the presidency, he said this, you and I have a moment with destiny. Will we preserve this, the last great hope on earth for our children? Or will we sentence them to take the first steps into a thousand years of darkness? The choice is ours. The fight begins here with you. I'll fight with you all the way to the end. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it.